All right, thank you for having me today. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about me and why I'm qualified to give this talk uh, about integrating your social media work with your WordPress. Uh, my parents bought their first computer when I was two, and I started right away with designing on that back when it was on DOS. Um, from there, I skipped ahead a few years, around 14, 15, I started designing websites for my family's business as well as doing their branding and their marketing. And continued on from there, I went to school for television uh, broadcasting to follow up going into freelancing web design. Um, all of my clients were having issues of, you've created this beautiful website, how do I get it out there? And the simple answer was, well, get people to visit it. And they didn't know how. So I started taking courses on social media management, marketing, and traffic. Um, since then, it's become a really big passion of mine. I have four certifications from Digital Marketer. And two years ago, uh, freelancing was getting a little too much, and I started the agency, Thumbtack Marketing, uh, in Thorold, which is uh, about half an hour, 45 minutes away from here in Niagara. And we specialize in social media management, web design and landing pages, blogging, graphic design, and of course teaching small businesses how to be able to market themselves as well because not everybody has a budget to be able to hire somebody like myself to be able to do it for them. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to have a big focus on Facebook, how to add a pixel to your site, what that is, uh, your marketing plan to go with it, uh, install a customer chat, uh, your quick to tweet icons, and as well as easy options to share your content. All right, so the reason why I've chosen Facebook to focus on today is we have currently 2 billion active monthly users with the average user for having of 155 friends. And when people are searching online for uh, new products and services, 57% of consumers state that social media affects their influence. And of course, 93% of advertisers use Facebook ads. That's how effective they are. Um, and of course, no matter how... No matter what age group you're going towards, you're going to have over 50% of that age group currently using Facebook. The rage does go down as they get older, but of course, their spending power is affected by that as well, by having more of an income versus an 18 to 29 year old. So what a Facebook pixel is, is a little tracking code that gets installed on your site. You might notice this when you go to other sites you and then you visit another place to start seeing ads pop up. It's called remarketing or retargeting marketing. So when you have that done, I you put this code on your site, it tracks them as they go to Facebook and other ads, and you can re-access that, that visitor to be able to retarget your products and services as well. This is great for branding and brand recognition, as well as when, when you're ready to do that retargeting, it's always great to have that data ahead of time instead of having that oh shit moment when you realize that you want to retarget those people as through the Google Analytics talk earlier explained how where they're coming from. Um, and that will also be able to allow you to have information to target on other ad platforms as well. So I would recommend uh, Pixel, uh, Caffeine Pixel. It's a free application, a free plugin that can be downloaded. Uh, there is a paid version as well, which you'll be able to get more options for when you're placing your ads. Um, but this one's very simple, easy to set up. The very simple Facebook Connect option. From there, you walk through your business manager. If you don't already have one set up, all you need to do is go to business.facebook.com and register. You can either set up a separate registration for that, or you can actually go in and link it to your existing Facebook account. Um, I recommend anybody who is placing ads to go ahead and create one. Um, it gives you more understanding about your web, your, your page, as well as other people that are working on it for you. It's easier to track what they're doing. Once it's all done and set up, you'll have this, uh, the blue box will turn to green. You'll have your pixel ID listed. I've blocked mine out. Um, and it will be all set up, ready to go. 
from there, I'm not going to go into full detail about it today because it is a lot of information, but you'll be able to go create custom audiences, what events you want to have tracked, and different general settings, and if you have a product catalog you want to have installed as well to be able to link that to your Facebook page. Of course, when you have your Facebook page as well, you don't want to have an ugly Facebook page, just like you don't want to have an ugly website. So when we are setting up Facebook pages for our clients, what we want to look at is your profile page, your group page, or your business page. And you need to know the difference between those because they all do separate things and they do have different roles within your business. The profile page, you'll be focusing on more of a personal standpoint. Whereas if you're going out and networking, uh, local networking groups or traveling for that, you may still use your profile page as well to be able to market your business. However, you might want to limit the personal information you post and create custom audiences with there. Posting too much about your business on there will get you flagged. And if your account gets flagged, good luck getting your account back. There's pretty much nothing you can do and you lose all your content, all your followers and all, all your friends. Group pages in a business have a few different options. You can either use one created for your business to be able to send information out to your followers and your fans, or you can participate in other groups. So being able to reach out to other audiences, find out where your target market is, and being able to contact them directly through the groups that have already been established by other people. And the business page is of course just that. It's about your business. How do you want to be found through Facebook? And any action that you have going on Facebook will affect your SEO by being able to impact any traffic that you're generating from your business page to your website. Um, I always get this question all the time about your marketing budget. What should you be expected to spend on it? And here comes this answer again. It depends. <laughs> yep. For the last uh, slide you for the business page, yes. do you create a separate profile or do you just do a profile to create a from your profile page, you would create the business page, or you can have it set up through your business.facebook.com account to be able to access it. No, it's a free service. The only time you would pay to use it is when you place the ads. But in order to place the ads, you have to have the business profile. So back to it depends. There is no right or wrong number. It all depends on your personal comfort zone within your yourself or your business. Um, we recommend for new companies to spend an average of anywhere between 12 to 20 percent of their revenue to remarket and get new clients. They do need a higher percentage because you are trying to get new information, new people into your business, and your referral word of mouth um, is on the lower side because you're starting to establish your business. Whereas the Established companies, we recommend anywhere between 6 to 12 percent, and that is because you already have that word of mouth, you already have that brand recognition, you may not need to push as much towards your ads. When you get to the 12 percent, that's when you're launching a new product or service, so you want to grow your business, you put more money behind it. So that's why we get the average of a 12 percent. And that will be across all your marketing. It will be your branding, your website, your social media, content, public relations, and any print management that you're, uh, print advertising you're doing. So you want to take that all into consideration when you're coming up with your ad budget. This is a new feature. You may have come across this coming up on your business page if you already have one set up. It's a slow rollout over the last few months. It's a chat, customer chat tool. So when you go to your site, you'll have a little pop-up uh, bubble in the corner, uh, being able to allow you to interact directly with your visitors on your website to Facebook itself. Um, so uh, the information I'm giving you today, some of you may have it, some of you may not have, depending on how Facebook has rolled that out to you. To be able to, if you have the option to set it up, all you need to do is go into your settings, which is in the top right-hand corner when you're signed into your business page, and go to your messenger platform, scroll down through there until you get to the customer chat option. When you're in there, it will ask you three simple questions to be able to set up your information and give you a lovely little code snippet. 
to be able to install on your website. There are other plugins available to be able to download to your WordPress site to allow this process a little bit simple, um, but they will slow down your site a little bit. So if you are worried about it, I do recommend just um, copying and pasting this snippet into your website itself, which is very simple by going into the theme files and um, adding it to your footer.php. Um, and of course, anybody that does not have any experience with doing that, make sure you ask for assistance because it's a lot easier to ask for help beforehand than it is to ask for help when you've messed up your site and can't get it back. And of course, always back up before you do any major updates to your site. Whether you make a mistake or you don't like what you did, you can always go right back. So this is something that you'll be seeing similar when you have that installed and it will link directly to your Facebook page. And no matter what you're doing on your ads, on your website, Twitter, Instagram, any other platform, even print, you need to have a strategy. You want to know who your audience is, have goals, and you want to have content. You can't create your content without knowing who you're writing it for or designing it for. Your content doesn't match your goals, what are you posting for? So you have to look at all three areas when you're designing your social media strategy, because if you're just shouting out about who you are, your followers, and your reach are going to go down, whereas if you're making it all about your customers and your consumers, they're going to be interested in what you have to say, because you're making it about them, because nobody cares about other people, they only care about themselves and how you can help them. When we're always when we're doing posting, um, I always recommend posting directly on the platform that you're using, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. They do have some great scheduling tools built directly in it, and Facebook has the easiest option to be able to schedule way in advance. You can do it years in advance. You can do it hours. Uh, you can even backdate your posts to me. Yeah. Um, when you're posting, oh, when uh, he, what he was asking was uh, about auto posting using your website and your blog to be able to post on your behalf or a third party service like uh, Hootsuite. Facebook is one of the major ones that will penalize you to be able to use services like that because it will decrease your reach. If you already have a great reach and it's not going to affect it as much, but if you're only having a few hundred followers on your page, posting it on, a, on the native platform that you're using, you'll be able to expand the reach because they are going to do that to promote you to use their platform instead of somebody else's. Um, another option that's really, really great for keeping everything easy um, and keeping it native to the platform is the click to tweet. Um, some, a lot of major blogs are putting this in there. It's a great call to action to add quickly in the middle of a blog and it keeps it simple for your followers to quickly and easily tweet. All they have to do is click on the tweet button it loads up their Twitter account if they're already signed in. It would, it's a quick another tweet button. If they're not, sign in or register. Makes it really simple. You will have you'll have to re already program in what you want them to say. They do have the option to edit it, but what it does is allows you to put it in your own words on what you want them to say about your blog. Um, and from there, we're going to go into the referrals and testimonials part of social media. Um, when anybody is researching your products, your services, even if you're just an information site, it's great to get, get that information about how you're impacting your followers and your customers. And being able to collect the referrals and testimonials will be able to allow you to promote um, the humble brag in a way um, about what you offer, what you do. 
and it will allow you for any negative reviews for you to be able to handle them appropriately and being able to monitor them ahead of time you can um, show to other people that are maybe reading that negative review that you are proactive in being able to resolve their issues your potential customers have the the ability to seek out reviews um, so it's important that you gain their information and have those reviews go to where exactly you want them to be ahead of time so promoting that somebody goes to your Facebook page and reviews goes to your Google account and reviews um, whether you use TripAdvisor or Yelp you want to be able to send them so it's easier for you to manage and collect those reviews over time when you get a negative review, of course, be prompt. Make sure you're taking care of the situation. Um, unfortunately, there is times and times when you'll be getting those crazy people that no matter what you're going to do, that you can't resolve that issue. And there's, it's best to just drop the issue. The people that are researching you about that will be able to see and understand that that person is legit crazy and will not be able to, will not take that into consideration about your type of customer service. Uh, and we're of course, of course, responding to positive reviews, thanking them for their time and coming out and visiting your page and making sure they come back. Because the chances are that somebody is going to visit, say, a restaurant and go and give it a good review on Yelp or Google is very low unless you ask uh, proactively for that review. Um, so this will be going into sharing. We're going to make it very, very simple for your followers to be able to share your information and get out there. Um, this plugin is, if you're using Jetpack, is probably already installed. Um, you may not notice it. You have to go into your settings and then sharing to be able to set it up. So you have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr. Uh, path and Google Plus that you can log in as as your own profile so that way when they do share it on the platform you automatically get tagged in it easily um, and then of course with a simple drag and drop you can select whatever platform you want to and quickly enable them to be able to share your plot your information on you can even set up the option for them to print um, your blog or your content that's on that page uh, so the ones I've selected on here is Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, and Google+. I selected that order because I know that is the uh, more common platforms that I receive referrals from, from links. So I know that go, putting it out in that order made more sense for my followers to view. And of course, as you can see, it's really simple. I didn't do any type of coding or CSS for it. It automatically pulled the information from my theme and made it match the rest of the site. Any questions at all as we're going? Yeah. How did you put the, um, put the tweet in the middle of the book? So when you're setting up the click to tweet, um, when you have it installed, it will provide you with the little code. Uh, um, it will have you the code. So I've put a couple spaces in between, entered the code, and then put the sentence in. Um, it's in the plugin. So when you install the plugin it, within the plugin settings, it will show you the code that you need to enter. Okay, the plugin is called. It's called the Better Click to Tweet. It depends. <laughs> um, so he asked uh, about Instagram, uh, what my feeling is on advertising on Instagram. It all depends on what your marketing strategy is. Is your customer base there? Does it make sense for you to spend your time and money to be there? Just being there to be there doesn't necessarily make sense for most businesses, especially if you're hyper local and only advertising to local within the, your local community. Uh, if you're selling a product or advertising a blog that's worldwide, you can ship anywhere. 
then Twitter does, uh, sorry, um, Instagram does make sense because you're able to reach that broader audience. And especially if you're a product-based company, you have more products as, to appeal to people online. You're not just putting words out on, on Instagram. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, which one? Uh, this one? Or the next one? It's the one where you were, um, you had website. Oh, my website. Yeah, so the slides will be available um, on my website to, to download. Uh, so if you just go to thumbtackmarketing.com forward slash resources. Um, I know, you know the usual is your audience, your goals, and content, but is there a template you use or set of questions that you all would ask? Uh, the question was, is there a template that I use to be able to set up the goals and audiences? The simple, yeah, yes, there is. I do use a customer avatar. Um, some companies I have, because they have multiple services and types of customers that go to them, we set up uh, sometimes five or six, and we create a marketing plan based upon all of them to make sure it interests their broad audience. Um, from there, I do have uh, smaller businesses. I might do more of like a monthly uh, marketing plan, whereas if it's a larger company, we tend to do more of a weekly because it's a lot more work, uh, hands-on. Yeah. What's the difference between a Facebook ad and a Facebook boost? That's a great question. So the question was uh, Facebook ad versus Facebook boost. Um, they end up in basically the same spot for the most part when you set them up. Facebook Boost will boost the post that you've already posted on Facebook and send it out to the audience that you select. When you do an ad, you have way more options than just boosting it. You'll be creating new, uh, unique content. You have more options on how you want the ad to react. Do you want to collect their information in a lead? Do you want to generate traffic to your website? Do you want that uh, ad to be shown on other sites other than just Facebook? So Facebook does put ads out there on other people's blogs that have chosen to be part of the Facebook ad network. Um, you have more options within the custom audiences, being able to remarket using the pixels. There, the list goes on what you can do with them. Um, something to keep in mind when Facebook gives you that, hey, boost the post, uh, it's been, com it's been uh, performing a lot better than other ones. Don't always believe it. Look into your analytics and compare. How is it uh, doing compared to other posts with the same content? It doesn't make sense within your marketing budget before you boost it. Um, is this thing that I'm boosting better set as being created as a new ad? It's all different things you have to look into before you're ready to click boost. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Anytime that you set up a business profile, it's not connected to your personal except for the login and how you access and edit it. So there's no separate login for it. When you set up the users of the page, you'll have a minister, administrator, an editor, a live contributor, and analysis. There's a few other options. Um, but everybody will have their own Facebook login to gain access to it. It's not like Twitter. There's one email, one login, and you just share it with whoever has access to it. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever you post versus somebody else, the only people can see who the difference is is people that are on the you, the user end of that site of being able to contribute. So if you versus your employee post, you'll see who did it. Um, but on the other end. And they won't see who did that unless you used a third-party app like um, Buffer or Hootsuite. It will show that it was posted from that third-party platform. 
Um, however, when you do do that, there is an option to list yourself as a team member, and that's something you have to actively do to have that, that connection. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. So, I know the answer is probably going to be, it depends again on what yeah. But I just, uh, just generally, when you work with somebody and you create a Facebook ad, do you uh, feel like the best strategy is to take them to within Facebook to capture them, uh, the lead, or then to take them to a landing page, or to take them to like a autoresponder series? Like, what's your experience with that? Uh, the question is about using Facebook's platform to generate a lead or using a third-party software like WordPress or ClickFunnels to be able to capture that lead. Uh, that varies depending on the amount of information you have the ability to, to give out and what your budget is. Cost for a lead is going to cost you a lot more than doing just traffic to your site. If you're looking to have people come to your website and go to a landing page on WordPress, the chances are you're going to pay a lot less for somebody to uh, get to that page. However, you're also going to pay a lot more to have them actually get to the converting side of confirming that you actually got their content information. Uh, my experience, if it's not set up correctly in the tracking, you are going to either get confirmations that you got leads when you didn't, because uh, the way that the URLs are set up and the way Facebook tracks you, so they're going to penalize you for paying for that lead without it. Uh, whereas if you keep everything directly on Facebook, it's easier for them to track and it's easier for you to contact them if there's any issues regarding the billing on it because everything is kept on their platform. And the great thing with Facebook support, um, there is a contact us section where it looks like it's a lot of um, user generated help. But if you keep digging deep, there is actually a call, it's uh, considered a call center, but it's a text in support. You basically wait on law in line to be able to speak with the next available tech support representative. Actually, one of their sites is actually in Thorold. Um, the best time to start getting in line for that is probably around 6 a.m. <laughs> so, of course, the, long, the earlier you get on, the better chance that you have in getting in line. Unless if you want to get on in the middle of the day, you know you're going to be sitting in front of a computer working on sites or whatever. Just grab a coffee and just have it waiting on the corner for a representative to come up. No, we're not allowed to. Um, but I did go to um, a women's uh, entrepreneur training session, and they did have somebody uh, not come in from their site to be able to answer some of the questions we had. Yep. Yeah. Do you have the ability to show us a Facebook ad? Uh, I think I do. I, I have some um, privacy policies with a lot of my clients, so I'm just going to disconnect the screen to see if I can pull some up. Uh, the question was to see if I can pull up an ad uh, to show. All right. So I do what's called a lot of white label work. So I do work for other agencies. So I actually can't let you guys see some of my ads that we have up. I'm going to pull up one that um, they're local to Hamilton. They're no longer a client with me. Uh, but I did run some ads. Just going to pull them up for you. Um, they got some great views on, we did a lot of video ads with them. Um, we did no lead generation uh, because the type of service that they provide, it falls into a lot of gray areas for having a Facebook page. Sorry, it's gonna text me. Um, Facebook is really, really good for making sure there's a lot of security. So it will automatically text me to make sure it's actually me that's trying to access it. I think I'm too far away from my phone to get the message. Do I 
pass me the phone. How do I get it reconnected? Thanks. Yeah. I had to disconnect it for a minute. Perfect. So this is uh, considered a business manager, which to most users it looks completely different and foreign. There's a lot of different options that you have. Uh, pixels is what we got into earlier. And for the most part, I stick into the ad manager. Or, of course, page posts. Um, it's running a lot slower because the amount of people that are connected. And it's not going to load. All right, let's see if I can go somewhere else. going on in here. Um, oh, here's some. Okay. It's not going to give me access to the ones that we're looking for right now. Unfortunately, a lot of the ads, because of privacy policies, I can't really pull them up. And, but what you would see in your ads would all be down in here. Um, these are closed ad accounts that I haven't accessed. They do clear out, I believe, after 90 days. I might be able to change it. It's like the other one, right? Sorry? It's a, yeah, that one loads. It brings it right to the page itself. But it did like that page. Um, I don't. But. So there is op, uh, manage promotions as well. This is uh, if you don't have Facebook Business Manager, this is where you will go in to be able to manage your ads. I don't recommend using it to manage the ads because you're going to have fewer fewer options and being able to have custom everything customized. Um, okay, but these are some of the ads that were done. Um, so within this account, they had link clicks of uh, 1,900, post engagements of 110, and link clicks um, were three. Um, everything will change. Here's so as you can see, there's these are multiple ads that they have coming up. I try to stay away from being able to do this in the ad manager. Uh, here's an example right here of a boosted post. What does the ad look like on the actual Facebook page? It's loading right now. So this is what they'll see on the desktop feed. There's no image at all here. It's just text. Free delivery until 4 a.m. Try our extra large ultimate deal pizza for $7.99. Phone number and address to be able to pull up, uh, bring it up. And you'll also see the what it will look like in the news feed. And then create that information? Yep. So you would go ahead and you would create it. Um, it will ask you a bunch of information. So this ad will show how it was targeted. So we were looking at men and women age 16 to 65 who live in one location. So this would have been in St. Catharines. We would have set up a 10 mile radius because that's within the six, six uh, miles that we're able to deliver for. We set the ad budget at $4. That was for a one night deal. So we weren't going to spend that much money on it. Out of uh, 244 people it reached, nine people engaged with it. One, and we got one page like out of it. 
At least nine pizzas, but uh, that's engagement. So those are just people that are liking it. It doesn't actually tell us how many people actually made that phone call. Um, uh, what I would do differently, because this is a boosted post with an ad, I would have actually had the call to action being call now. So we can actually track how many people are clicking on the ad and pressing call. So there, and there is done through Facebook. Through Facebook. That's why I would try to get into the ad manager, which w it wasn't allowing me to access. So we reduce the uh, call to action button, say, click here yep. on our mobile device, I, I it, that, would have that would have activated the and call. You would have gotten a different statistic off that? Yes, I would have. And I would have gotten different statistics all the way around. So instead of 244, it would have dropped because I would be paying more for the call versus somebody just to view the ad. So, well, you set up an ad to set up to make a phone call, go to my website, do I learn more about my service? Learn more, click here. Um, an e a Facebook has an amazing option. I'm going to pull it up. So, and when you're setting this up, you're going to have to, you're trying to present the ad to people who you don't necessarily know. So you don't know. Um, you can actually exclude people who have already liked your page. You can exclude people who have already liked your page, but you want to target their friends. Because the majority of the time, the people who like your page, their friends and family are your target market because they have similar interests with those people that like their page. So what we're going to see now is a lot of options um, when you're posting on a business site that you wouldn't have seen probably even five, six months ago. And I normally wouldn't be using these unless I was doing just a quick boost post. And that's when you get the option to advertise your business, uh, tag a product, um, get a call, um, offer a discount. When you start doing that, you actually get those call to actions to be able to get those people to, hey, message you, call you, that type of thing. Get directions. So if I was actually a brick and mortar business and I want somebody to come in and buy something, I would put directions on there. And it, it does bring the cost up of your ad, but it's worth it because you're actually getting that action from that person. Okay. Um, can uh, there is. So the question was, can you target people within Facebook groups? Yes, as long as it is already listed in Facebook's targeting. So if it's a really popular page like a Taylor Swift official fan page, yes. You, those are something that Facebook has probably already gone and done the research on who those members are. Whereas if you're just looking at a, a Facebook group of Hamilton local buy and sell, Probably not as much, and that's when you're going to get more. You have to know who your target audience is. Type it in. I don't have a good question, but you know, if I have my own shop or whatever, and I was doing advertising, logging into my own account, setting up a business page, it's all good. But now if I have a client, how does that work? Do I create the page for them, or I get their login to log in through the pages? Yep. So the question was, how do I create a Facebook page for my client, not just for myself? Um, there's a few different options. You can either create it for them and assign them as an admin. You, if they don't have a Facebook page, you can create it for them. Some of my clients don't even know how to, if they already have a, a Facebook page and they just want to give me access, they don't know how to do it. They'll just give me the login. I, I always tell them don't. Uh, it goes against Facebook's terms and conditions, but from time to time I do have to. Um, but the easiest part is when Facebook gives you this little drop down on the side, it start listing all your pages. And if you go to see more, you can actually show all the pages that you're associated with. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm the administrator of all these pages. I can be an editor. I can be a live contributor. I can just be an analysis. So they just want me to send them a report on what they're doing on a regular basis. It just gives me more information to their site. Um, but for the most part of these pages, I believe I have created about 90% of them and then just sent them out to the client just by connecting their, their Facebook page in the settings. And then if you wanted to leave, you can still leave and they still have access. Yep. You just click um, uh, settings, the amend, when you go to change role, remove, it will ask you for your password. So don't forget it. Um, uh, so nobody, if you just leave your computer on, they can't unassign you randomly from it. Probably a stupid question, but 
I think I thought I set up a um, business page for my blog by asking for the handshake tool. Page. Okay. Okay. Handshake tool. Like as it is in a verified page, or? Um, yeah, they would have given you a phone call, and you have a check mark next to your page. So if you look right here, I have a check mark next to mine. That means I'm a verified. Oh, I've gotten it back too far. I'm a verified Facebook account. So it means I'm real. I recommend all businesses and blogs, anything that's official that has the right contact information, to make sure that you have that. Um, no, that's not really smart. No. I've never heard of a fake handshake. Is it a plugin that you had on your blog, or? No, it was something I had to request through Facebook because I was going to do any um, affiliate money, you know, and use it, do any um, sponsored posts on my blog. That's something I'm not familiar with. I'm sorry. Um, the only way you can tell if this this is separate if, for your business page, if uh, if you go to this drop down menu, it will be showing right as your pages. And that's how the only way you'll know if it's it's a business page, if it's a group, anything different like that. Yeah. Yeah. The question was, how do I get the check mark? Is when you go into the settings, I can't pull that up because I've already done it. When you go into your settings, it will give you the option to verify your page, enter in the phone number, they call you provide you with a code, you enter it and press enter, and it will show up. No. For people that are liked or followed your business page, I have heard that it now the show those posts as often or as readily that they're now targeting groups. It's true information. So she was asking uh, about the reach and how it's getting out there for groups versus pages. Um, I haven't posted that much on my page for the last uh, week, but I have put out a couple. Um, total actions on page two, uh, the page views is, 100, uh, is 21, and my reach is 85. So that's really low. Um, I've had three presentations in a week to get ready for, so I haven't really been posting it. It's one of those things that you work on your client site before you work on your own. Um, of course, because I'm a page, my, my reach is going low to lower. I do organically post. I will not use a third-party uh, site on mine. I do have a group as well, which has a higher reach. Um, this was mainly back in January. There was that huge announcement from Mark indicating that we are going to favor groups. It's because Facebook is, is a social platform. You have to be social on social media to get the attention. If you're just sitting on your business page posting about the next deal and the next special you have available, you're not going to get anywhere. And when you're being about your target audience, what do they want to hear? What do they want to see posting about you as, hey, this is what I'm doing today. This is an interest. Hey, come check. You're being that person, not a business. If you notice on my Facebook page, I have my name first before my business name. I'm marketing myself. So when they're seeing me, they're seeing me first, not my business. So I'm actually able to get a higher reach before any other just blank business name because I am being that person. So do you suggest we change to a personal name slash our business name? I suggest that you focus on your content marketing plan. <laughs> and focus on how you're going to approach your customer and how you're going to be social and not salesy. I recommend keeping an 80-20 split, 80% being that educational, being informative, being able to solve the problems of your client or informing them about how to use your products and services and how it's going to solve their problems before you sell it to them. So, did you get that uh, when you signed up that way? How do you get the name for the business name? That's a good question. Um, the question was, how did I get my name to show up first? When I signed up my uh, Facebook page, uh, 
over two years ago, I was just thumbtack marketing. The way you market on Facebook has changed in the last two years. All I did was go into my settings and I changed it. It does go into review process with Facebook. It could take up to 72 hours. They can approve or they can deny it. But this is independent of the person profile. Yes. So this this is my business page, which I get to by clicking on this drop-down arrow, whereas my personal, it looks completely different, um, it, but yet it will show that I am a digital marketing specialist. That is something I have chosen to do, and it will show the two pages that I've chosen to list myself as a team member, but those are my choices that I have put on my Facebook page. It's not something that Facebook makes you associate with. Uh, the question was how I'm using uh, my group for my business is for the clients that I have that are just starting out their business, they can't afford my services to be able to fully take over their accounts to do their social media management. They come in, they do um, a one-day training on being able to set up their social media. Um, we go through the, the basics of setting up their page, making sure their graphics are nice, creating their basic content marketing plan and discovering who their, their audience is and going to the basis of ads. From there, if they want to stay with me to be able to give them monthly suggestions on how to improve their pages, I send them a report where they can ask questions in the group. So instead of having to email me, it's all, it's all done through Facebook to be able to increase my reach.